now since somebody's lost their keys, um, it's on a tag that says 148LUT. Associations. Thank you for coming. My name is Kathy Benz and I'm the current president of the association. All candidates qualified to run for the District 4 seat of the County Commission race were invited to this forum. And as you can see, most of them showed up. Um, we've been experiencing a rash of this in Sarasota, and I'll discuss that later. Uh, we video our meetings whenever we can, and at the moment, Tom Matrullo is creating a video that he'll post to the internet for us. On our website, however, Sarasota, conasarasota.org, we do have an archive of our videos, and uh, you can go back and look at many of our previous meetings, and if someone else winds up doing a video of our meeting, uh, when we haven't been able to, we're providing a link to theirs. The website has a lot of resource materials uh, for the community. Uh, we have two pages. One is government resources and the other is general resources that are available uh, in the community or even in other parts of the country, uh, you should take a look at them. I have to switch classes to be able to look at the audience. You know, you get to an age or this issue. I don't see elected candidates um, tonight. Usually we do have some. Um, so I'm going to move on uh, to the announcements uh, for our neighborhood associations. Candidates running in other races locally uh, that I see here in the audience are uh, going to come up right now to the podium, please. And I'd like to give you a minute to introduce yourself if you'll queue up over here. My name is Maria Rule. I'm running for 12th Judicial Circuit Court Judge. Um, the circuit covers Sarasota, Manatee, and DeSoto counties. I'm in the primary August 28th. Please vote. This will be the first, this will be the second election for Circuit Court Judge since 1984. And yeah, it's shocking. It was shocking to me too. And I believe in, in our elections. I believe in the pe it, we, it should be the people's choice and not anybody's, not, not anybody else's. So please vote for me, Maria Rule, August 28th. I'd like to explain that further to you. The reason why there hasn't been an election in that amount of time 
is that systematically the people leaving uh, the judge seats for the circuit court, the 12th circuit court, which is ours, have um, triggered um, a nomination by a committee that is headed by Pat Neal, has been headed by Pat Neal for 20 years, and all of these judges uh, have resigned just before the date that would trigger an election. That's why this is an important election, is to get the elections back to the citizens. Hi, good evening. My name is Ruta Maria Gignari, and I'm running for Sarasota County Commissioner for District 2, which encompasses Fruitville Road down through downtown Sarasota over to Lido Beach and to Longboat Key. It's an at-large seat, meaning anyone in the city of Sarasota or anyone within the county of Sarasota can vote. I don't have a primary, so my election will be November 6th. I will face the winner of the Republican primary, which is the winner of either Christian Ziegler or Alexandra Coe. Uh, just so they know a little bit about me, I am fighting for environmental protection, sustainable growth and development, and safe infrastructure for our county. I want to make sure that I represent all of you in no special interest. So please vote for me, Ruta Maria Gignari, come November 6th. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nick Guy. I'm running for the District 1 seat of the Sarasota County School Board. It's currently occupied by Bridget Ziegler. She was a Scott appointee four years ago. She won by less than 1%. This election should not be about who has the most money and the prettiest signs and, and the most uh, you know, developer friends. It should be so, about someone who will sit on that school board and be a champion for our public schools. For four years, we have not had that. We have gotten nothing for four years. We cannot afford that. Public education is under attack. I know this because I was a teacher years ago. I spent the last decade building a career in IT from scratch. My little girl just had her first day of kindergarten today. And I'm sick and tired of yelling at my TV and getting in arguments with people on Facebook and Twitter, so I decided to get off my ass and do something about it, like you are here sitting in this room tonight. So I need your help. I need your help. There are flyers, there are envelopes, there are signs. You're here representing your neighborhood. Go back into your neighborhood for the next 14 days. Can you knock on 10 doors per day? Can you make 10 calls per day? I can tell you the people you need to call. Go to votenickguy.com, click on volunteer, contact me, and I will get you the information you need because we're out there knocking on doors, making calls day and night. I need your help though because I'm, I need your help. I'm, I'm not in this fight alone. I got lots of people helping me out, but we only got 14 days left. So get out of your comfort zone. I'm way out of mine. I need your help. <laughs> Thank you. fact of how important primary elections are in this county. Um, essentially, there are races here that will be decided with this primary race. Um, so we have people like Nick and uh, Maria who are in races that um, the primary is going to make the decision, so it's very important for people to vote for them if that's their choice or against whoever they please to vote against. In the primary. Yeah. Excuse me? In the primary. Oh, just in the primary, yeah. The primary, uh, of course, we begin another whole cycle um, after the primary leading up to the general election on November 6th. And um, at that point, we'll cross in, in September to having a forum that's related to the November election, which is the general election. Uh, at this point, I'm not entirely sure, but I think September, uh, which will be September 10, uh, will be um, a twofold meeting, one candidates and the other issues. And I think we'll do that both in September and October, uh, because as, as things progress in these campaigns, things may change, and it's worth having a discussion of both issues, I think, at that point. Our calendar, on an annual basis, is always on our website. You can always uh, find out uh, what we've uh, presented and what we intend to present. Now, it does change, so you do need to check it every month. 
We also in November are having our 57th anniversary party, and we have that at Michael's on East. And it's a very pleasant affair. Um, you can uh, sign up for, to receive an invitation or even uh, make a payment for it on our website. At the moment, I'd like to have Chris Bales come up, please. These are the associations that have very urgent issues running at this moment. A lot of problems. <laughs> so, um, I'm with the group that's trying to stop the uh, oh. okay. stop the rezoning of Bowlin Road, which is off of Debrecen, and it's a very rural neighborhood. Uh, most of the homes are one house for five acres. And of course, the developers wanting to come in and build a, a very high dense cluster home development in the center of this uh, beautiful canopy road area. So um, there's a planning commission meeting coming up uh, September 6 uh, at 5 p.m. And we're asking if you're coming out to support us to please wear blue. And um, these neighborhoods, these kind of precious areas of the old Sarasota that we remember are being attacked. And it's a sea of cluster homes out there and we're trying to protect what little bit of old Sarasota we have. So um, please get a card and um, if you have nothing going on September 6, 5 p.m., please come out and support us, appreciate it. There's also an issue of flooding right there. Ben? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the commission meeting uh, is at the Sarasota County building. Uh, Ringling. Ringling. Young Ringling. Sorry. And that's, what's the date again? Six. 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 Oh. It's a Thursday. Chris? Thank you. Yes? Okay, I'm sorry. Ben? Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kona. Thank you. And uh, good evening. My name is Ben Cannon, and I don't want your vote. <laughs> I don't even need your vote. What I need is for people to get more involved in the community and protect this great, great city and county that we live in. And tomorrow night at 5.30 is your opportunity to do that. At City Hall, there's going to be a community workshop, and I look forward to seeing everyone there. And this is all about a developer that wants to come in behind Trader Joe's and build 95 foot tall condos. And they are, not only are they asking for rezoning, I have to bring this up here, they want a comprehensive plan amendment, they want to rezone, and they want a major conditional use, and they want a height variance as well. And it's absurd. And we need to elect county commissioners that know that this is absurd and will help us, the community, and not develop, developers. We need to stick to the plan and, and protect our community. So 5.30 tomorrow night at City Hall, please help me and help yourself to uh, keep Sarasota a great place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Sarah Cochran uh, from Siesta Promenade uh, cannot be here tonight. But she asked me to give you an update. Uh, just a um, Her notes indicate that uh, the Benderson project manager, Todd Mathis, has scheduled the neighborhood workshop for Thursday, September 8th at 6 p.m. at the Pines Presbyterian Church. Um, the address for that is 6135 Beechwood Avenue, and that's on the western side of uh, Tamiami Trail, um, just before Stickney Point Road. Eight is a Saturday. It's the 23rd. It's the 20th, August 23rd. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's the 23rd. Yeah, the 23rd of August. Okay. Thank you very much. It's the Pine Shores Church. Yes. It's at the Pine Shores Presbyterian Church, 6135 Beechwood Avenue. 
Um, she said, assuming, uh, she's assuming that this will be held in the sanctuary, the big round building there, and there's paved parking located off Crestwood and Beechwood next to the sanctuary. Overflow parking is on the grass. Um, her statement is, it comes to no surprise that they have chosen this date, knowing that it is a very popular time for people to be completing their summer vacations in around town. Uh, she implores you to make every effort to be there. Um, at what time? That's, that's at 6 p.m. Um, you said the county staff will be in attendance and that apparently Benderson is trying to fast track the application to get it heard prior to the election he's frightened, uh, or at least before the new commissioners start their term. Tom Matrulo, you also have an announcement? Yes, um, very quickly, I, I'm Tom Matrulo with the Fresh Start. We, we have about 50 HOAs that have been working uh, diligently since last November to present some ideas that might be better alternatives for the salary fields than a waste processing facility. Um, we are probably going to be meeting with the county commission on September 12th. Um, that date hasn't been finalized, but that has been the date suggested by county staff, and we are happy to meet with them whenever they set the time and date and we'll try to circulate that information. We'll be meeting to basically see if they can see some reason with regard to planning for the salary fields. At this point we have made many proposals. We haven't heard back from them. So this will be our first chance to kind of see what they, they think and what they have to say and we'll take it from there. This is a very big issue in Sarasota County. I hope you understand. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's an open forum meeting for September 12th. Yes, it is. Yes. Does any other association have an announcement to make? You need to come up here in order to use the microphone. Hi, I'm Al Gilman. I'm from Chestnut Creek in Venice. Anyway, and we have the guy speaking to the tower behind Trader Joe's gave my speech. It's only in our case, it's Venice Regional Bayfront Hospital. Once put an 85 foot hospital. Now, just, you know, in the middle of what the comprehensive plan has rationally made a swath of uh, single family open and at the rural and uh, conservation land. Okay, so they want to. They, they want to be close to 75 so that doctors can get there. Or, I'm sorry, in any case, uh, the Planning Commission has already signed off on this, has recommended this to the county, the Board of County Commissioners uh, on the 28th of August. There will be a meeting of the commissioners in the Anderson Building at 9 a.m. and we want, if people a, look at our website, www.vrbh-not.com. I'll give you a sticky with that address if you just approach me. Um, anyway, and show up to let the commissioners know that this is insane. Is David Anderson here? Would you come up and uh, do I can't hear you. Uh, you'll need to come up to the microphone if you could, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Dave Anderson, and I'm the president of the Serenade Lakes Community Association. And I'm heading up an area wide. Uh, Hold your microphone like this. Okay. Like uh, this. All right. Uh, I'm heading up a uh, coalition of uh, uh, neighborhood 
uh, in close proximity to Twin Lakes Park, going down Iva Street all the way to uh, Serenoa, Serenoa Lakes, and other residents. And many of you may or may not know, but on uh, July 11th, the Board of County Commissioners approved by a vote of four to one to uh, approve a very flawed uh, Grand Lakes uh, village development. And our group uh, prepared for, and we have now filed two lawsuits against the county. One is the comp plan amendment, and we are very, very fortunate to have the Sierra Club join us locally, along with a thousand friends, to provide uh, pro bono legal assistance. Uh, each of these suits were filed on August 10th, it was last Friday, and the first one relates to a comprehensive plan amendment that has implications well beyond just this one project because it takes the heart out of uh, the 2050 plan. It would uh, create urban sprawl uh, to a major, major way. And it, that, of course, uh, is what 2050 is supposed to prevent. The other thing is there's no commercial component to this. He's putting gates on this uh, project. We're talking 1,100 homes on a two-lane country road that dead ends and will dead end for the next 15 to 20 years, even though it's been redesignated as a minor collector road. Uh, we are using the services of Ralph Brooks, our attorney, and uh, we also have Tom Hawkins um, from A Thousand Friends providing legal assistance. Thank so you. Uh, I just wanted to update everybody on that. And the other one relates to the rezone. Thank you very much. And you want to just have a few words to say about the Legacy Trail? I never have just a few words to say about the Legacy Trail, but I'll keep it short. I'm here with a couple of um, our board members representing the Friends of the Legacy Trail. Just quick hands, how many know about the Legacy Trail? Great, it's good to hear. We've got a big referendum, um, important referendum to us coming up on the November ballot, and we need to educate and get the word out. Um, if you have associations or, or homeowners associations that you have groups of people that you might be looking for some um, speakers and so forth, we'd love to come and explain the story behind all of this. Get the facts out there so that we've got the positive votes coming in. Sounds like from who I talked to, there's a lot of um, neighborhoods represented here tonight that will actually have the trail coming very close, if not through them. It's an important project for us, the referendum does ask for authority for the county to issue bonds to complete an additional eight miles from the current end point just south of Clark Road. That'll bring this trail up into Payne Park in downtown Sarasota. So this is a big, uh, important project for us that'll give us 18 miles of paved recreational right-of-way in an area that's a beautiful nature area that we'd like to see preserved. So. November 6th, look for our referendum on the ballot, and then let's hope we get a yes vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, I'm going to um, begin the program with our candidates, Wesley Ann Beggs, Mike Cosentino, Al Mayo, and Lourdes Ramirez were invited. And uh, my first question, is going to relate to the fact that, uh, as I alluded to earlier, uh, we've been having a rash of candidates not showing up at forums. And the forums are of the people who do the voting for these people. These are the residents in the neighborhoods to whom they are refusing to come and speak or be questioned. Um, I think that this is a significant issue. This is the second election cycle that we have had a consistent occurrence of this. And it's only certain candidates that are choosing to snub the people. I'd like to have each of our candidates uh, talk about that uh, one after another, please. 
Well, I definitely agree that that is a issue um, regarding specifically Commissioner Mayo. I was sharing with a few other people actually earlier this evening, I've been at hundreds of events all over this county from top to bottom, North Port to the airport, and I have seen Commissioner Mayo twice um, in, in hundreds of events that I've been to. And I think it is a symptom of a bigger issue. I think he is at least to some level scared of his constituents and, and that's not a good place for any elected official to be and my question to him would be how can you represent us if you don't know us and if he continues to, to be absent for these types of conversations what what trust is that demonstrating to, to his potential voters and, and those in which he represents so thank you that was good Wesley um, I would, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the old saying, it's better to keep your mouth shut and have everyone assume you're stupid than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm in District 4. Um, certainly, I've seen Al Mayo uh, personally, whether it was the, the celery fields hearings that I attended or the uh, the hearings on the Benderson project, the hearings on the setback issues with regard to uh, Siesta Key. Literally busloads of people show up and pack these forums and there's anywhere from 70 to 150 people that speak against what's going on and, and he always votes for it because of the two or three people and it, it just boils down to the fact that we have a pay-for-play government uh, Mr. Mayo consistently votes for the people that give him money to run his campaign. And so it's, I can't fault him for making bad decisions. I fault him for making no decisions. He needs to call the people that donate to his campaign to find out what his decisions are. That's my particular problem with that candidate. Um, Lourdes? Hello, I'm Lourdes Ramirez. Um, I have a different uh, perspective in that I, I get to see him in a different uh, scenario. I'm uh, very active in the Republican circles. I am running in the Republican primary. I'm president of the Women's Republican Club. And I can tell you that he doesn't show up to the Republican issues as well. I mean, there's a couple, once he, he fired for office, he started to attend one or two. But they also asked him whether he wants to debate me in front of the Republican clubs, and, and he, he has not done that. So we, I saw him rarely earlier on this year, but not too much lately, so I see that. But as we were talking about, um, even when, as a, as a citizen activist who works with neighborhoods, we've you know, requested audiences to talk about issues. And on uh, one of the groups I worked with who was Siesta Key, where we were worried, worried about the short setbacks. Four of the commissioners said yes, they would meet with us, and he was the only one who wouldn't. So it's a pattern. I think it's more than just this. I think it's